Perhaps Eli Terry's most important contribution was what's called the pillar and scroll clock. He was uh, originally just making the movements for long case clocks, but his next advance was to try to incorporate that wooden movement into a, uh, into a nicely styled case, but still would be affordable to, uh, to more than rich people living in cities. So he developed the pillar and scroll style. Uh, we call it, uh, here's the pillars, here's our scrolls up top, dainty feet inside is one of those wooden works movements like you saw there, and a reverse painted glass down below that uh, had a, uh, often a rural scene or a patriotic scene of some type in there. So um, the condition of these is an issue. Of course, I'll be talking about condition a little more later, but while I have this picture here, pillar and scroll clocks are relatively fragile and they suffer from damage over time. So whenever anyone tries to assess the quality of a pillar and scroll clock, they're going to look at the feet to see if they've broken off and been repaired. You'll see lines in the veneer or look from behind and see breakage. And often the scrolls have been broken off and repaired or replaced. Often they warp too and they tilt back and maybe at some point the owner said, gee, this looks warped, let me twist it back, and he ends up breaking it off, and then it needs to be repaired. Uh, I have had these over time, but uh, you can expect to pay a few thousand for these, if not more, for special variations of them. But I guess if you want to go cheap, you can actually have a nice 20th century electric reproduction of a pillar and scroll clock.